casual yeah. stuff. So cool. you fuck up, you say something. Don't worry about it. Just power. Just keep laugh about it. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm all right with it's, that. it's more awkward when we try and cover it up. So. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I've tried so many times having to like do professional videos, and I would like at first have to do like ten cuts in a row, and I'm yeah. like, damn it, that doesn't work out well. Redo oh, it. No. He makes us look so good. <laughs> <laughs> he makes it so easy. I always gotta learn just to slow down how slow I talk. Down, Dude, yeah. if I have like five coffees in me, I'm gonna talk 100 miles an hour. No one's gonna be able yeah. to hear what I'm saying. Yeah. That's cool. So. so what are we doing today? What's up, guys? Mike McGoldrick here with Alex Macklin. Hey. CTP behind the camera. And today we got. Aaron Horshig here, just drove on, in, everyone? fresh out of the car. <laughs> Dr. Yep. Aaron Horshig owns Squat University. You can check him out on Instagram. Uh, we've got him here this week for a show. We're gonna do some screening and stuff now, and then we're gonna do a podcast here in a bit. Uh, but first, he's gonna walk us through how we do, or how he does his like basic lower body screening, um, specifically because he specializes in the squat. So, Aaron, let's get started. All right, so here we go. So. The first thing I do when screening an athlete for their squat is I get them out of their weightlifting shoes. And the big reason for this is I want to be able to see how they move without a weightlifting shoe that's got a raised heel. So first thing, let's take these shoes off. These shoes? These shoes. These shoes right here. Yeah, take these shoes man. off. My yeah. ugliness, my ugly <laughs> squat is about to come out, man. Exactly. <laughs> I spend way too much time on the shoes, weightlifting shoes. So big thing, every athlete or most athletes should have the capability to squat body weight with their toes straight forward. Now when I say straight forward, I don't mean actually completely toed in. It's actually about a five to seven degree toe out angle. So we say relatively straight forward. Now from right here, I want to see how well they move. And when I ask them to do this with a straight forward foot, I'm able to illuminate any problems in their movement patterns that then we're going to break down and try to see what's wrong so then we can fix their movement quality. So uh, how wide do you want our feet? You know, that's the thing is stance width is always going to be dictated by comfort. So every athlete's going to have a little bit different of a squat based on their anatomy. Usually about a, uh, a you know, shoulder width stance is pretty good. I take a little bit more narrow of a stance. You want to be able to feel comfortable and be able to squat as deep as possible. So if that's maybe a little bit wider stance or a little bit more narrow for me, Whatever feels most comfortable. I think so, I'm overthinking this. I keep, I know, I keep <laughs> jumping. Exactly. Don't worry about it. Okay, so what I want to see is to squat as deep as possible and hold it for a second. Ten. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Mike's isn't bad, but let's see if we All right, so go down one more time. Oh, fuck. Man, so, guess. first thing you can tell, okay, when you go down, is that you're black. <laughs> this, is, this is deep without First thing I can tell is what happened to his toes. His toes spun out. Now instantly that's telling me there's probably something with his ankles. We're gonna confirm that in a second. But also, what you happened to his foot? <laughs> <laughs> now, when we squat, the first thing that I'm looking for is how stable their foot is. Now, naturally we wanna be able to maintain a tripod foot. Now, what that means, lay your back for a second. Do we need our socks off? Would it be easier? Um, actually, yeah, let's take okay. those socks off. I just got my toes done too. I was on vacation. Oh, yeah. Toe dams in there. Get them out. All right, so thing to think about your foot is like the base to your body's house of cards. So if your foot's unstable when you squat, you're never going to have the capability to perform good quality movement over the top of it, right? So land your back. If we look at your foot, right, we've got three different parts on it, right? You got the base of your heel the base of your first toe and the base of your fifth toe, right? And when you squat, all three of those need to be in equal contact with the ground, right? And that's called a tripod foot, okay? Now, if you think about it, if you've got like a three-wheeled motorcycle, if all the three wheels are on the ground equally while you're driving, you're gonna have a lot of power, right? And you'll be able to go really, really fast. Well, when you squat, if all three of these points are on the ground equally, you're gonna also be able to, you know, produce a lot of power. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when we jump on up, Show that squat again. And what's gonna happen is that when he squats down, because of his ankles probably, you can see those foot, the uh, arches collapse. actually collapse down a little bit, right? So that's telling me already that he's sort of pushing over onto the base of his first toe. The base of his fifth toe is raising up, raising up you know, a little bit. So yeah. his foot is unstable already. So that's one thing that we would work on is every single time you go to squat, you feel for where your feet are, mm -hmm. right? And just sort of cognitively understand, hey, my foot needs to be in a good arch position 
and already a lot of people feel more stable and they're able to produce a little bit better movement on top of that. Yeah. So what you're saying is basically I'm losing points of contact on exactly. the foot. Yeah. Your balance is off and when your balance is off, you're instantly throwing your body off as far right. as its ability to produce efficient force and power. Right, right. Because you're not yeah. uh, glued to the floor as you would exactly. probably say. Yeah. yeah. So some, you know, one thing that a lot of people, <clears throat> right, they'll push their big toe into the ground or they'll drive their knees wide a little bit, right? So if you squat down, right, now here's the big thing, right? A lot of people, right, when this happens, right, and their knees go in, right, they use the cue, will drive the knees wide. Right? Instantly, look what happened, right? Mm -hmm. Your foot became into a good arch. Right. Right? So that's a really great cue for a lot of people. However, if you squat down again, now drive your knees real far wide. Right? If you drive them real far wide, what happens? Foot comes off the ground. Exactly. Yeah. So you just became unstable, unstable in the opposite yeah. direction. So right. that's like the whole drive the knees wide. Yeah. It only works to a point. Yeah. Because if you drive the knees too far wide, then you just become unstable in the other position. Oh, I've seen that a lot. You'll see people. Yeah. You know, they like over exaggerate it exactly. yeah, and, and they're on the outside of their feet and like, well, I'm driving the knees out and I'm like, with well, your foot's off the ground. But you can't produce it. You can't <laughs> right. produce good force if you're like that. Right. Exactly. So the, our body's able to produce it, the most efficient force when it's stable from the ground up. Right. So different verbal cues that we use for athletes have to be specific for the individual. So yes, yeah, squatting is individual. Like nobody squats the same way. <laughs> That's a big, there's no one size fits all when it comes to squatting. Now there's d definitely some certain absolutes that we look for, mm -hmm. like having a good tripod foot. But again, everyone's gonna look a little bit different. It's all about finding what's best for each individual. Cool. Okay, so that's the first thing we saw, right? Now we wanna be able to test the ankles, right? So what we're gonna do, it's a really simple test. Everyone can do this at home. You're gonna get Yay, down. Yeah, play along. <laughs> you're gonna get down next to a wall, anything you can find. Now, five inches is the actual distance you wanna be from the wall. My simple way of doing that, fist plus a thumb, like this. Oh, cool. It's gonna be roughly about five inches. You don't have to get a ruler. Now, the goal from here is can you touch your knee to the wall without your heel popping off the ground? Okay? So, Mike, let's try that, see what it feels like. Fist plus a thumb? Fist plus a, fist plus a thumb, yeah. Can you touch your knee without that heel to the wall without the heel popping out? Not, not bad. Woo! A little tight back here. Yeah, this is my bad angle. This, okay. this angle is tighter than the other. Now, do you feel a pinch at all in the front of the angle? No, I feel pretty, pretty just tight tightness in the back. In the back. Yeah. Okay. So if it's just tightness in the back, that's usually significant of like a soft tissue restriction. Yeah. So you have like you know your muscles back here, your fascial fascial layers. Uh, those are a little stiff and bogged down. Okay. So. That will work with calves. Or exactly. And if it was a pen, should be more joint related. Yeah, it would be joint related. Okay. Some people have both. Yeah. So let me see the other one. Here. Yeah, and that's a big thing too. Always test both ankles. Yeah. Because a lot of times yeah, people will have a restriction on one side that's different than another. Yeah, that's, that was that one's on so that much side. easier. But yeah. same restriction if it was mm -hmm. like in the back. So like if you were an athlete that had a bunch of sprained ankles in the best, you might have a joint restriction. That's a pretty easy thing to develop. Now, okay. How would you so with the calves, would yeah. you do kind of just like use a lacrosse ball or anything like that to kind of break up? So if you had tightness in the back of your calf, you're going to respond to two things. Foam rolling or lacrosse ball, right? Getting in there and mashing those tissues up a little bit and stretching. Okay. So those are the two things that you're going to work on the best. What are some uh, stretches that you do? Okay. For so uh, let's see here. We'll grab a kettlebell over here. Now, my favorite one that I like to use, it's called a goblet squat stretch. What you're going to do is you're going to squat down, and then from right here, all this. you do <laughs> is land your knee over yeah. your toe. Exactly. Try to keep your heel on the ground, and you're going to feel a really good stretch in the back of the calf. Yeah. Right? You can do this with a barbell sometimes, Exactly. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Or you can do it with a plate. You got plus plate. You got a good ankle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on it a lot. So, and that's the big one. Now, when no, you're doing you do that, that, that sounds important. What's that? You work on it a lot. I work on it a lot. <laughs> you should do mobility work every single day. That's a yeah. big thing whether it's foam rolling, a little bit of stretching every single day. So that's a big thing I tell my athletes is, hey, 15 minutes, yeah. 20 minutes. Would you do it before or after you train? That's a good question. The time you hold that is going to differ based on when you're doing this, right? So before our workout, right, we're trying to prime our body to be able to handle the loads we're gonna impose on it during our training, right? Yeah. So I wanna be able to usually do short duration stretches, right? So maybe 10, 15 seconds and I'll do a number of sets. Long duration stretches, right? Like two, three minute holds. They're great for being able to change the length of the muscle over many weeks. But they also, if you try to do like a three minute hold prior to your workout, most research has shown 
that it's going to lead to a short decrease in performance. Yeah. So you're not gonna be able to produce as much power right, right. afterwards. So yeah. for ankles, right, weightlifting, right, we have to have very, very powerful ankles to be able to catapult that bar up, right? Mm. So usually I wanna do like short duration stretches, like a 10, 15 seconds. Huh. So. Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, that's a little short, short stretches before, yeah. and I like to do even, uh, short stretches like during like in between sets exactly. like but not not to the length of time where it's like five three to five minutes that's yeah. more I reserve for afterwards when the muscles are already 100%. warm the the joints are already warm that's when you can in, in fact uh, get the most change out of probably after exactly. like so after a workout right before your workout right those short duration stretches are going to help neuromodulate the tone in your calf muscles and allow you to increase that mobility of your ankles sure. then afterwards yeah definitely do the long duration stretches for sure so it's all about sort of when you're doing it yeah. but also it's also you have to you know the individual right if you have an athlete whose ankles are totally restricted right I'm all right with setting them back with a little decrease in performance yeah. beforehand if I'm going to see a lot more increase in movement ah, capability, yeah. I'm glad right? You said that because yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. So if you stretch bef if you stretch before training, yeah, it may decrease performance. But if you can't get into a good position because your ankles are jacked up, exactly. then that little you know five percent decrease <laughs> in performance is not going to pay off. You got to look exactly. at the bigger picture here. Right. You if, you, if you improve your position and it helps your performance by thirty percent, mm -hmm. but the static stretching drops fifteen percent, you're still net positive, right? right? Exactly. So it's yeah. definitely 100%. more important. Exactly. Cool. So, so that's one stretch that you can do. Now, here's the deal: not everyone can get down into a deep squat like that, yeah. right? So, what else do we do, right? So, what I like to do is just sort of grab a plate. <laughs> we'll go over here. <laughs> and what we'll do is we'll just throw this on the ground. And what you're going to do is just get down into a lunge like this. Oh yeah. And you're just going to drive there. your knee over the toe, right? And what we did is we decreased the hip mobility requirement of the stretch. Mm -hmm. So now it's a lot easier to get down here for most of my people who have like really tight hips. Right. Now you can focus on that ankle mobility. Yeah. Same sort of thing. So yeah, when you use a band, I've seen some people try to use a band to kind of band a distraction with the ankles. You can, and that's what we're going to talk about now. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. there you go. Well, <laughs> all right, so real quick though, when you're doing these stretches, yeah. you know, you're down in the squat and you've got the knees going over, where do you want the knee driving? Great idea. So actually grab that bar or the kettlebell, kettlebell. and do that. So as you go down, let's try to lean this way. What I want, every single stretch should have a purpose to it, right? And if it doesn't carry over to improved movement quality afterwards, it's not gonna be that useful for us, right? So when I stretch this way, I want that knee to drive directly over this part of the toe. Okay. And sometimes maybe even a little bit out this way, right? Okay. But what I don't wanna ever do is drive that knee in, yeah. right? Because what are you doing? Yes, you're maybe still stretching the ankles, uh -huh. but at what, There's you know, cost, point, right? Contact, exactly, right, we're right, teaching right your ankle. body that it's all right to stretch into that mm -hmm. right so i like to always stretch Ooh. either going straight or maybe more out to the side a little okay bit. so like yeah. mid to, mid uh toe to pinky toe yeah, yeah. okay exactly and keeping the heel on the That's ground a good the heel on the ground yeah. exactly yep and here's the thing your foot's gonna flatten out a little bit you know so you don't have to try to hold it huge yards mm -hmm. but again you don't want that foot to collapse completely Should you try to keep the foot straight in this position or are you allowed that's to toe a, that's out? a great thing you know it, it's all based on the individual mm -hmm. you know if somebody's got a really really restricted ankle i'm all right with them turning the toes out slightly yeah. if they're getting a really good stretch out of the calf yeah um but ideally right we're working towards an improved body weight squat with the toes relatively forward so that would be my end goal is that you can do it with the When I try and go feet forward, I get a lot of pressure in the tibia. Okay. Mainly along the side here as well. Mm -hmm. Not so much in the ankle, but up here more in that. Like, yeah. The so that would be something I would probably have you foam roll that area first because uh -huh. you might have some restrictions in that outer part of the calf yeah. muscle that's really bogging down. And whenever you do try to go straight forward, it's being yeah. tensioned it like so a, much. It feels like there's a lot of torque when I'm trying to keep exactly. knee forward and, and drive them out mm -hmm. or feet forward and drive out. Yeah. So I have to turn feet out and it feels better. Exactly but yeah. I feel it's powerful. So like, that's the big reason I like foam rolling before I do any All of this right. other stuff. Now I wanna ask a question and that most people like probably don't even think to ask, why is it important to have the feet forward? Exactly. The biggest thing is when you squat with your feet forward, it shows that you have the mobility, the functional movement to be able to move as your body's intended to, right? Everyone should have the ability to squat all the way yeah, down. If you look at a baby, Relatively that's straight how they forward. Exactly. Now, that's <laughs> the big thing, right? A lot of people will go, well, squat like a baby, right? Yeah. Well, it's not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. The reason for it is that I want you to have the capability to f fully move the way your body was designed to, right? Because so many, many of us, right, we've sort of gotten to, into the position where we're okay sort of doing half movements, mm -hmm. right? We offset eight hours of sitting with one hour working out and we're okay with it, right? You should be able to move well and move often throughout your day, right? I think Gray Cook, 
the inventor of the FMS, he talked about that. So throughout the day, right, you should be able to just sort of sit down in a deep squat and express God, that full you. muscle mass. <laughs> that, that's the end goal though, yeah. right? For everyone is to be able to express yeah. that full functional mobility. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing is, the squat is a movement ever before it's an exercise. Right. So most people, when we think of squatting, we automatically jump to barbell, the barbell movement. Right. And I'm saying, hey, let's take a step back and try to move well first. Because the better you get at moving into a bodyweight squat, the more capability and the more potential you have to move better, you know, with better barbell, quality movement right. with a barbell on your back. Right. Exactly. Cool. So, what's yeah. next? So, all right. So, we just talked about the stretching, right? Let's get a band and we'll talk about what happens if you have a the joint pinch. restriction. The pinch in the front of the ankle. Okay. All right. So, Ooh, that's, that's a, that's a good a one. Awesome band right there. <laughs> all right. And actually, we'll put his foot right through here. So, if you did the test right at home and you had that pinching sensation in the front of your ankle or blocked sensation, it's significant for a joint restriction, okay? Now here's the analogy I like to use, right? You're driving down the road, you get to an intersection, right? Now normally, your knee should be able to go straight through the intersection, right? That's your tibia going through the ankle joint, right? Well, when you have a joint restriction, it's like you're coming up to a roundabout, right? You can't just drive through the roundabout or else you're gonna mess your car up, right? So what happens is that when you have a joint restriction, your body hits that roundabout, it can't go any farther. It has two options. A, it stays place, right? So you're gonna have to compensate somewhere else in your body, or it spins off and it goes around the roundabout to get more ankle mobility, right? Yeah. So that's why a joint restriction can easily lead to a knee compensation, right? People's knees collapse in. A lot of times we think it's a knee problem, it might be an ankle problem, right? So it's all about screening and seeing, hey, is that movement problem due to a mobility issue or a combination of a coordination issue? Got it. Right? So, Let's say you had that pinching sensation, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much foam rolling or stretching you do, you're likely not going to change that pinching sensation, right? So the way we do it is we have to use a joint mobilization tool to fix and take out that road bolt. Right. Make sense? Yeah. So jump in here with your right foot, face out this way, and we're gonna get a lot of tension on this. Now the big thing, I'll and, step into it. Yeah, and uh, get down onto a knee with All your right. back knee, is we need to place this band on the talus bone, which is a small ankle bone right at the top, right here, okay? Now here's the deal, I walk into a lot of CrossFit gyms and I see people who put the band right <laughs> there, there, okay? Right. That doesn't do anything, oh, yeah. okay? Now, and the reason for that is because as you move knee forward like this, right? Anatomically, your tibia, right, your big leg bone right here, mm -hmm. slides over your talus forward. It almost translates like that, right? Uh, okay. So if you have a block sensation, in order to improve that ability, we need yeah. to have this band pulling Pull backwards right. so that we can work on the joint mechanics, right? So if you're pulling backwards on the tibia, it's not doing anything to the actual ankle joint. Ah, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes that's perfect sense. You ever, I've seen some of this too. Do you ever mm -hmm. have uh, the athlete kind of try to lift their uh, lift their shin up a little bit and then and then flex forward. I haven't seen anyone do that, but the, the one thing I, I see a lot of people do is they'll do this and they'll also move their knee in. Uh, right yeah. now, the one thing you got to do right is when you drive that knee over, right, hold it for a couple You're seconds. Like <laughs> <laughs> We're we gonna just get to that. We're gonna get to that later. <laughs> Not my, my infamous knee pop. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the big thing, right? You're holding it for a couple seconds. If you have this band in the right place and there's enough tension on it, it should take away that pinching or block sensation feeling, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'd probably have some do is like maybe 15, 20 reps for like a five second hold. And you can also work it around. You know, you can go out a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to go in just one line yeah. of motion, right? So you can work it around a little bit. If you're seeing Doug do this, Doug's ankles are so good. Like, yeah. he, he just, yeah. this one video of him doing this, it's like he's moving his ankle like all the way, yeah. like <laughs> this way. Yeah. <laughs> like, These things are great. Yeah. How, great how much tension do you need to actually create a change? What you're going to see is that if you don't have enough tension on it, you're still going to get that pinching sensation when you drive your knee okay. or your toe. So um, you can also put your foot like on a small box. Yeah. And what that's going to do is, right, we talked about, toes. exactly. Yeah. Oh, you can do that too. What do you mean? Okay. But we'll let, yeah, like have your foot up here yeah, or put it on a plate. And the reason for yeah. that is because, like we talked about, that band's got to pull down and back on the talus. So it's going to just put that band in a little so bit elevate better elevate the whole foot. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Gotcha. Cool. So, yeah. So that is... The ankles, right? So depending on what you felt, if you had a tightness in the back of your ankle or a pinching sensation in the front of your ankle or both, 
there's different things that we need to be able to do to improve upon that. And you should test that ankle mobility Absolutely. without shoes. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. barefoot. Yeah. Yeah. Because think about this, right? If you so have just a regular, add, exactly. So if you have a, a basic running shoe on, right, you're going to get like a 13, 14 millimeter heel drop. Mm -hmm. If you have your weightlifting shoe on, that's a 22 millimeter heel drop. That's right. a lot more ankle mobility that you have to sacrifice to try to well, get over. Well, and also the ground is going to be a lot harder if you're barefoot. Mm -hmm. So you can feel the collapse in the arches more. Exactly. Versus yeah. it, even if I was doing it on that and testing, you, you may not be able to see the collapsing of my foot because yeah. the ground could be shifting. It helps illuminate the problem yeah. a little bit more whenever you get out of your shoes. I'm curious, what are your thoughts? More honest. Yeah. What are your thoughts on perhaps taking off the shoes and maybe doing barefoot squatting or just squatting in trainers rather yeah. than always squatting in weightlifters? That's that's a great question. And here's here's the thing that, that I always say with that is it's all about your personal goals, right? If your goal is to be a weightlifter, a power lifter, to lift as much as possible, research has shown that you're gonna get more performance, right, out of a weightlifting shoe. Yeah. Right? You're gonna be able to get in better mechanical positions, you're gonna be able to produce more force, your center of balance is gonna be a little bit better. However, if you're just here and you want to be able to sort of get more functional movement mobility, more strength, mm -hmm. um, you just wanna get strong yeah. for just daily life, I'm all right with you squatting barefoot. The thing is, is that you have to be able to show good foot stability, right? And good ankle mobility. Yeah. The problem is, is that a lot of people have restricted ankles and yeah. poor ability to stabilize their foot. So yeah. as much as that person may want to squat barefoot, they're not ready to do that yet because they're going to put their body in compromised positions whenever they do do it. Yeah. So it could lead to a breakdown, possible injury or something like that. So, I mean, you see people all the time that are like, hey, I squatted 500 without any shoes on. You know, that's awesome that you can do that. 99% of the people need to work on their foot stability and their ankle mobility in order to do that. But oh, if you can get up there and that's your goal, there's nothing wrong with that. I've tried to squat with barefoot oh, and yeah. it's and it's hard no, and sure it and uh, yeah, yeah, it's exposing. It's, I mean, you I already knew when when you, exactly. we did this, I had those yeah. those issues. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if I if I don't work on this, it's going to it may it may actually hurt in the long run. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's a good thing. We always want to make sure that we're safe with everything that we do. So. What's next? The hips? So, yeah, so let's go to the hips. Um, I'll have you lay on your back. 